Hi everyone, I'm Jane Applegath and welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Our goal with this show and company is to bring you trailblazing women from around the globe to share their ideas, their knowledge and inspiration to help you transform your dreams into epic success. Today's guest is an epic female entrepreneur who has created the formula to ageless glam. From passe fashion to style with panache, her expert coaching will have you looking and feeling like a superstar by showing you how to live your most extraordinary life with flawless flair and attitude. Tracy Jeske is the director of On Vogue Stylist. She is an internationally certified personal stylist who helps women 40 and beyond up-level their glamour game to unapologetically create and live their best and most stylish second act ever. No stranger to wrapping up for winter, Tracy was born and bred in Canada before establishing her stylish Stiletto Sharp brand in Italy, where she has been living for the last 20 years. Blending Italian La Dolce Vita with her flair for fashion and style, her personal life experiences living in Australia, working in Dubai, London and abroad, and her experience of over 30 years in the fashion industry. Tracy shows women how to express their unique style, a look that has her clients standing out in a crowd and feeling fabulous in every season of their life. Tracy's motto, age like your dress size, is only just a number and should never define how you dress, look, or feel. From Italy, welcome Tracy Jeske. Hello, how are you? Hi there, I am so great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here today. Oh my gosh, I, I, have, uh, I am so excited for you to join us here from Italy. And I know it's, it's almost, uh, well, it is nighttime there. So thank you so much mm -hmm. again. And I'm just going to jump right in here. I know you have been featured in many publications and in Fox, NBC, CBS, spoken at conferences around the globe and more. So what is your inspiration? What is your passion, the driving force behind your vision and your message? Well, my, my vision and my message is that, you know, I want every woman to sparkle and shine and getting older and having clients that were surrounding me that were older too. I just realized that there was this struggle that women had with getting older and style and following their dreams, following their passions. It was just like once they reached a certain number, they became over the hill and everything just, you know, life ends at 50, but it's not, it's actually the opposite. For me, life began at 50 and this is what I want to help other women with. And I want them to realize that you you don't have to be frumpy and grumpy because of your age. You can still wear whatever it is that makes your heart sing and makes you sparkle and shine, regardless of the age appropriate rules. I love that. Frumpy and grumpy, you will feel frumpy and grumpy if that's the, what you're wearing. But yes, absolutely love that, 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 that interpretation of style. So reinventing yourself. I know this This actually probably played in a lot to that question, but give us a little bit of insight into how you would work with your clients a little bit in the reinvention process because many of women get stuck in, in a particular rut. And then, of yeah. course, there's culture too that says, you know what, you shouldn't be dressing that way because you're older now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the age appropriate. So, you know, working with me, what I love to do is the first thing we have to understand what your goals are and what your dreams are. Who are you as a woman? What is your personality? Who do you want to show up in the world as? And what are the three adjectives you would like everybody to say about you and your style? Mm. As you know, your style speaks before you do. So when you meet a person for the first time, they're going to have, you have three or four seconds to make a first impression with these women or men, whoever they are. So when I meet people, I believe what they would say about me is that I'm creative, I'm fun, and I'm unapologetic. I definitely, I, I dress how I want to, and I dress what makes me feel good. So this is what I do with women. We go in their wardrobes, we do a detox, we get rid of all those things, because I find also when women age, they tend to hang on to garments that are not no longer serving them. So if you are trying to fit into that size two pant that you used to when you were in your 30s, 
get rid of them because you're just torturing yourself every time you try them on because you're putting a value and a worth in a size. That size does not define anything about you. That has nothing to do with your worth. And if you did fit into that size two pant again, you are a completely different woman today. So you wouldn't even want those pair of pants that you had when you were in your 30s. That is such great philosophy. I have to say, I think we're all guilty of that at some time in our lives because it's reminiscent. But you're yes. right, we, we change and, and some, a lot of us hold on to the past because we don't want the change. But that is fabulous, Tracy. I love that insight. So I'm a little curious here, uh, because we're speaking to a lot of entrepreneurs as well, how did you get your first clients when you started? Well, I think for me, my the beginning was with my Instagram. That's how I really got noticed. I really took care of my Instagram and creating my brand. So people got to know me. They started to get confident because my message was very clear and it was very consistent. I find that when you look, when you're following people, especially on social, you have to be really careful. But one thing to notice is that when somebody is changing you know, changing their, their brand or their name or their message like they are their clothes, that I think is one big alert for everyone. So I just really concentrated on that. And I just, that's really how I found my first clients. And also working with mentors who had me travel around the world and the connections that you make when you're networking. Networking is a fundamental part when you're, when you're starting out. And even when I'm, after 13 years, I'm still networking. I still join boot camps. I join whatever I can that reflects me and is, is, you know, it's worth my values. But that's, you know, that's how you find your clients. Just really make sure that your brand is very clear and consistent and also through your look and your style. Like I said, we worry about our business cards. We worry about our websites. We're so concentrated on the digital side, but you need to remember you are your best business card ever. You are the best version. You are the best publicity of you. So you have to start really concentrating and thinking about how you are showing up and how you, are, how you look in this world, what your style is, what it's saying about you. So it's a lot more than just business cards, websites. It's also you. I love that. What That is so impactful when you hear that you are your best business card. So when you're showing up, be there fully. Yeah. Yes, be there in, in your, in your not, yes, because we get in our heads so much. And like you said, there is so much to be thinking of, but then we forget, well, we'll just show up the way we are because a lot of people feel today that, well, you know, it's, it's the internet. It's natural. People love you know, but it's your business card, you know, yes, and, and, and what, you know, what's that? Go ahead. No. And I think with zoom and everything being so virtual, we tend to think that what matters is from the waist up, but it doesn't because we are sending a message to ourselves. Maybe the person on the other end cannot see us and they don't see that we have on our pajama bottoms, but we do. And <laughs> we are the most important person and how we are sending, you know, a message to ourselves that we're not worthy, we're not ready. Because really, if you had a job interview or you were meeting your client, would you wear pajama bottoms? No. So then don't do it even when you are on Zoom. I know it's easy. I know a lot of us, you know, try to get away with it, but it's more for yourself than the person on the other end. When you feel empowered about what you're wearing, when you're wearing that killer business suit, there, and when you're feeling good about you, there's no way that, you know, you're not going to get that job. There's no way that you're not going to get that client. So remember to always dress for success, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Oh, absolutely fabulous advice. I love it. So you mentioned um, dressing for yourself and how it makes you feel. It is a unique style. Why does the expression of your own unique style matter so much as opposed to, say, going with the flow or the fashion or what's latest in, in, uh, in the magazines? Well, when we go with the flow or, you know, we've all been guilty of seeing a girlfriend that's wearing an, wearing a beautiful outfit. She looks amazing in it. And we go and buy the exact same thing and we get home and we try it on and we look awful in it. It just does nothing for us. And that's because it's not us. Each of us has a personality. We all are a persona. We're all individual. So we have to go on what works for us and what 
reflects our personality. I would not look good in corporate. I'm not a corporate girl. There obviously are moments when I have to dress up and I do need to wear a suit and I need to show up for that occasion, but I always keep it true to me. So my earrings might not be so corporate. My shoes and my bag might not be, but I try to keep it to me. And I, you just copying other people, you lose yourself and you don't carry the look off. You don't, you don't feel good about yourself. You're not confident. And people see that, like what you feel on the inside, you are showing on the outside. So when something doesn't connect to us, we see it in the mirror, we look at it and we're like, this isn't me. And all through the day, you're going to be feeling that you're going to be feeling uncomfortable and not confident in getting, going out and following whatever you were going out for that day. Yes. And also it, it, <clears throat> you project a certain energy, like you said, it makes you feel awkward or out of place and so on and so forth. And so then your confidence goes down. So yes, very vital. And you did speak a little bit there about business and style and you're not corporate and you do sometimes have to dress that way. I call it the business of style. So let's say, for example, how styling, uh, you've had, you've said a little bit about that, how it can help you in business. But let's say, for example, you you do have to change into something that's not really your um, comfort zone. But how would you recommend people? Because sometimes even, OK, let's say we're corporate, but then we have to dress up because we have a special event. Um, so how would you advise a client to dress for the business of style? And in, in other words, you know, help them move forward in their career or whatever uh, uh, environment they're in? Well, colors play a very important part in this. So we know that red is a very powerful color. So it's not, okay, so we all have to realize too that when you're trying to choose the right color, you need to know the hue that is appropriate for you. you we all can mm. wear red, but we just need to know what the hue of red is that's perfect for our skin and for our hair color and our eyes. So once you know that, choosing the, prop, the, the appropriate colors. So, you know, if I'm going to go... I wouldn't wear red because of my pink hair, but pink and red aren't bad, but I would wear more black because to me that's more severe and that's my power color. But I know a lot of women in business do like to have red because it makes you stand out completely and it does give you that sense of power, like you're going to rock that day. So that's what I, you know, and the outfit, of course, you know, it depends on what body type you are, but whatever it is, I would choose a color. And that color, whatever color makes you feel powerful. And obviously if we're in business, we know that you need to wear a jacket, a shirt, a pant or skirt, whatever it is that makes you feel good. Women, some women like to wear pants in corporate, but you know, definitely a pencil skirt, whatever kind of skirt that makes you feel powerful, but make sure it is you and what you love and that color that makes you just go out and knock down whatever wall is in front of you. I love that. I love it because it affect and it, that kind of goes segues into the next question, which is how it affects your mood. Because if yes. you've got that powerful color, you know, you look good in it. Your mood is going to shift with that or on the opposite yes. end, if you are dressing in a mousy color, something that just completely washes out your complexion, you're not your your whole mood is maybe going to go that way. So yeah, I say how does how style affect your mood? Well, absolutely. Colors affect our mood. And especially as we age, this is something that is so true. Um, but colors definitely do cheer. Our look makes us feel better. When we feel like we, we look good, we look beautiful, we approach other people then in that same way. And people actually come to us. You will attract your tribe because you look more approachable. You, you're smiling. Your skin is glowing. Everything about you is just working. And that energy creates energy. And then people start to notice that. And they'll be like, wow, you look beautiful today. Or they'll look at you and they'll be like, hmm, I'd like to get to know her. Who is she? What is she about? About because you are just like you're carrying that out it follows you wherever you go and you know color for us as we age is really important because our skin gets duller it's a fact of life so we need to get color from somewhere so getting it from our clothing is the best place to get it unless you like to color your hair like me but yes definitely wear colors I know women when we get to a certain age tend to shy away and they wear a lot of blacks and, and very severe colors but you need to add color into your wardrobe, definitely. Because it will change uh, your yes. mood and it will change how you look. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love it. And I just wanted to, because you touched on that, it will attract people to you and your tribe. Maybe you can share with our audience the story of when you first moved to Italy, because I absolutely love that. You shared it with me earlier. 
just tell our audience a little bit of your move there and how it the the whole style fit into that yes well I am a very independent woman and I've traveled around the world. I lived in Australia for years on my own before meeting my husband. And then I decided to leave Australia and come to Italy and, and be with him when we got married three months after me being here. But I literally could not say a word of Italian. I knew ciao mama, ciao papa, pizza, pasta, mafia. And that was it. And that's <laughs> mafia. <laughs> and that's not going to take you very far. So yeah. for me, it was extremely difficult because I love to speak, as you can see, I love to interact. I love to, you know, be independent. And in that moment, I needed my husband for everything. I needed him to speak for me. I needed him to take me to get groceries. I literally could not do it. I, I, my driver's license wasn't valid here. So I had to do a driver's test. I understood absolutely nothing. And it was such a sink or swim moment, swim moment for me because I just felt useless. I felt hidden. I felt not important. Sometimes I even was embarrassed because people were talking around me and I had no clue what they were saying, mm -hmm. why they were laughing. Are they laughing at me? So I had to be creative and I'm not a person who gives up easily. So I was not about to move because I couldn't talk to somebody. So I used my styles. What I knew best, I used as my best tool. And that was my style. So I up leveled my style even more than before. And I started to stand out in a crowd and people started to notice me. I got the courage. It empowered me to go out and try and talk, go out for dinner with my husband and try to speak with his friends, even if I made a hundred mistakes, grammar mistakes. And people started to notice me. They came to me. They would ask me who I was in their broken English, my broken Italian. And we somehow made it work. And this is how I knew that the importance of style and Rachel Zoe's quote that says, your style is, style is a way of speaking, style is a way of people noticing you without you having to say a word, something like that. It's not exactly like that, but it's true. Your style speaks for you. And this is how I created my business. People, women wanted to start working with me. They came to me asking me questions, how to style. So this is how I realized the value and the importance of style and how it literally like save, saved me in a moment that was extremely difficult in my life. Thank you for sharing that. That for me is so inspiring and it really shows you in real life how powerful it really is. Um, I, it, it certainly plays full circle to, you know, what you're living and doing and your passion. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I'm, thank you for sharing that because I think it, it's a great example of how style can affect not just your mood, but those around you, you know, and, and either yeah. draw or repel individuals from you. Yeah. So <laughs> speaking a little bit about style and budgets, um, how, if you have a limited budget, how do you make an outfit look better than it actually is? Or what can you recommend to individuals who are working on a, on a limited budget? Okay, so first of all, I want everybody to know that style is not a price tag. So it does not mean because you have Gucci or Dior, you're stylish. That has nothing to do with it. Style is something that everybody has. We just all have to figure out how to bring it out. So if you are on a budget, the best thing to do is to accessorize. That will maximize your wardrobe so much and mix and match. So when you are going out shopping, I love my clients to buy an outfit, a top and a bottom that matches, so that's one look, okay? But that one look becomes 10 or 12 because you mix and match that top to whatever color is in that top, you mix it to a bottom. So it could be, let's say I'm just gonna give an example, a white top with a pink print and an orange and yellow. You can take a white pant, a white jean with that top, you can take a pink bottom, whatever is in that top, you put it with the bottom. You put it with sneakers one day, you put it with a heel the next day, you put a belt on it, you put a scarf. There are so many ways, big earrings, big statement earrings, a big necklace, and you can change that look. The same with your skirt that you bought that was with that outfit, you do the same thing up top. You put a t-shirt with it, a jean jacket over top, and you can mix and match that same outfit over and over and look like it's something completely new every time you walk out the door. That is great advice. And I love that you said style is not a price tag because I believe uh, the labels become what individuals, a lot of individuals think are the style. When in mm -hmm. fact, they're, they're the labels, you are your style. 
that's the yeah, message exactly. I'm getting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you can, you said, just by using accessories, which is a great way to uh, bring a statement to you and, and show your style. I love it. Oh, that's great. Great insight. Mm -hmm. So I know you touched a little briefly on age appropriate dressing. So what are your thoughts? Um, just we're going to come full circle on that because I know that there are a lot of women listening and all ages that are in every industry from around the world. We have some people from South Africa. We have some people from Australia, Canada, and of course the U.S. But uh, all, and all different cultures. So do you feel that it's this, because you have traveled extensively, do you feel it's the same everywhere that it doesn't matter? The number does not matter? Yeah, the number does not matter, definitely. I believe that in every country. Obviously, when we go into countries like Dubai and, you know, those kind of countries, women have, you know, it's just different for them. But as far as age goes, I think age is just a number. And age appropriate is just something that if you give me a rule and you tell me that because of my age, I can't do it, I'm going to do it. I understand if you're talking about body shapes or colors, those kind of things, then yes, you, you should follow it. But in the end, you decide. I'm not the one who's going to make you. I give you the suggestion. And if you think if it fits with you and it makes you feel good, okay. But as far as age, you know, when we age, they tell us we are not supposed to show our knees. This is something that oh. really blows my mind. We're not supposed to show off our knees, so we're supposed to wear skirts that are down below our knees. But when you see a woman walking down the street, do you look at her knees? Like, who looks at their knees? Unless they're wearing a super mini skirt, but you're not going to be watching their knees. So, you know, that is one, you know, and we're not supposed to wear color. We're not supposed to color our hair. We're not supposed to go gray. There's nothing more beautiful on a woman than when she goes gray and she's natural. I think gray on a woman can actually make her look younger. It's when we force the color and it's not the right color for our skin and our eyes that you will look older. But if you have gray and you love it, then I would go for it. If I had gray, I would go gray. I absolutely love gray. I think it's very stunning. So, you know, there's a yes. lot of rules. Mm -hmm. And so it's chic. If you look at The Devil Wears Prada, Meryl Streep, like who was hotter and sexier than her in that film? You know, she looked absolutely stunning. But if she had, mm -hmm. you know, yellow hair, or blonde hair or black, it would be totally different. So, yes, if you're gray, go gray and be proud of it. Show it off. There's women who are 20 and 30 who spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have that silver, beautiful hair. So, yes. mm hmm yeah absolutely it seems to be the trend right now but you're right it does pop and sparkle uh when it's it's that hue of gray that's silver oh my gosh it's it's really beautiful well tracy thank you so much is there any other last tips that you would like to share with our audience well if you know if you're not the, the most important thing in your wardrobe i know a lot of women think that more means i'm more stylish actually it's the opposite less is more so I would love you to get onto my, I'm sure you're going to share this with everybody, but I have the 10 must haves in your wardrobe. It's an ebook. And with these 10 must haves, then you build your wardrobe around it, but you need these. You do not need a lot of things, like I said before, to mix and match. But you know, if, you, if you're if you curious on what that is, go there, because this will really help you create that wardrobe, start to create that wardrobe of your dreams. Oh, I love it. So we will have that information for you uh, in Tracy's bio, where Tracy's bio is and all the links to her Instagram and how to connect with her. Uh, just go to the show directory and we will have not only her ebook, but we will have a way to connect with Tracy uh, and her, her website as well. I think this has been fabulous because we're on the Epic Vision Zone. I have one last question for you and that is, if your life were an epic story, what mm -hmm. would the title be? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Oh, what would my story be? She what would your title be? She followed ah. her dreams. I love mm -hmm. it. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's a, I know. Sometimes I catch people off guard, but that was perfect. Thank Don't you so much, Tracy. It's a great. Thank so be sure so to much. check out. Oh, you're so welcome. I appreciate your time again coming to us from Italy. And be sure to check out Tracy's bio once again on our summit directory where you'll find all of her links and her information. And uh, we are 
Be sure to check me out as well on Instagram at Jane Applegath and check out how you can become an epic entrepreneur at janeapplegath.com. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dream into epic success. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you where we'll ignite your vision, up-level your confidence, and set you on the path to your dream's epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.